What up, everybody? Looks like we have Swampy in the house. It's going to be a good night. Yep, you're right about that. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have Ashley here. She's feeling under the weather, so I'm just going to have to go solo tonight. Looks like we also have... Looks like Chris is going to be spraying some cobalt candy heavy flake tomorrow on a doom buggy. That's awesome. We got Josh E. Brown. What's up? Dave Brown, Kevin. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Uh, James, John. I see a lot of Chris. A lot of uh, what's up, guys? All right. I'll kind of explain to what, what we're going to be doing here tonight. Uh, I have this panel, a paddle, I guess you'd say. It was made out of wood. I think it came from Hobby Lobby or something like that. But what I'm doing is I'm matching uh, the same style of what I did on a custom chopper that I recently painted on a set of these, on a on a panel, on the on a paddle. I keep on saying panel, but it's actually a paddle. Um, I'm just basically matching it for the customer to have to hang on his wall to kind of have as like a memorabilia piece um but just yeah he's just kind of said do what you want um i'm just going to match it up what we're going to be doing is i'll be lining it out with some lime line tape uh, we'll be using some uh, black base coat some root beer candy and uh we'll probably do it end up doing a little bit of lace in the middle here uh we'll spin all the leaf one of the other things we'll be doing that's a little bit different is in that particular design i had a filigree style in there you probably seen on one of my other videos but uh, we'll be doing that as well. I'm not sure exactly what, I have a couple of these printed out uh, with my Cricut maker and I'll kind of, I'll kind of cut it out and see where it belongs. I was thinking I was going to do something small right here on this side and then something right here as well. So it'll all kind of tie in and that will be in this like a filigree style. I'll kind of, I'll kind of use, show you how I use the stencil to be able to be able to do that when we lay out that leaf. So uh, we've got a lot to do, so I'll go ahead and get to it. If you guys have any questions, I'll try to keep up with them. Uh, Big Worm. What's up, man? So what I'm doing is just knocking this down with the uh, 600 grit sanding sponge from Limeline. So when we do this, I want to focus on, because I know my leafing is going to go up and around here, up in here. So I want to make sure that when I'm sanding this, I'm getting that area smooth. Now, see how that's kind of rough right there? That's As long as we're just scuffing it up we're going to be fine um if you're going to put leaf on the very edge you're going to want that to be smooth because the leaf will pick up that texture You can, you can use these sanding sponges wet or dry. I'm just going to use it dry for right now. Um, so this has been flaked with the Limeline Metal Flake. And I threw three extra coats of clear over the top of this. So it feels pretty smooth. Like I said, make sure that wherever you're going to be laying your leaf down, you have that area sm really smooth.
All right, get the sounding residue off of that. Okay, cool. So we have it all knocked down. It feels really smooth. Like I said, we're gonna. Uh, yeah, it'll be all right. All right, feels good. So here is the uh, eighth inch lime line I'll be using. So I I like to start with the whatever size that's bigger that you're gonna be using. And then um, you could follow it up with like the 16th inch, or if you start with a quarter inch, then you could follow it up with an eighth inch and then a 16th inch. That's the way I kind of do it. Like I said, this is all pretty much do whatever you want. Not everybody got to do it like me. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just kind of like always, I'm going to kind of follow the, the contour of the paddle. Now, one thing I kind of want to show you is you see how I'm um, like, instead of, instead of just pushing it down right here and then, you know, kind of working my way and going back and forth like that, it's going to be a little wavy. If you just, okay, so you start right there. Just let it hover over the top. And I'm, I'm looking at the negative space right here. So I'm about a 16th inch out. So I'm going to hold it straight. And then I'm going to lay it down just like that. See how straight that is? Instead of kind of like, you know, doing a little bit at a time. This one I'll probably come to a point right here. So I'll go ahead and snap that off. And what I'll do is the same thing that I did on the other side. I'm just going to match it up. Round that curve. Okay, so, oh, got to finish this side right here. So once again, I'm looking at the negative space right here on the edge. That way, maybe I'll bend this corner and see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks good. All right? No, 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 no. No, I think I'll just stick with the, coming to a point there. That's the nice thing about tape is if it doesn't look good, you can just pull it off and do something different. Um, once you've been doing it for long enough, you can lay down the tape and you're like, ah, it ain't gonna look that good. Uh, it'll that would have been fine, but I feel like keeping the shape and the sharpness. Although I do like mixing up like points with the curves as well. This one looked like it just needed to be mapped out the same way. Yeah, maybe with the 16th inch, we'll round those. We'll see what that looks like.
Okay, looks like we're all mapped out there. Um, that will, let's see. Well, let's see. I think I'll go ahead and let's figure out what we're going to do and where we're going to put the, the copper leaf. Because we do want to strip a copper leaf coming all the way up around. We'll probably end up filling up this whole area right here with the copper leaf. And then it'll split off right here on both sides and then come down the board, probably wrap around that. Um, so let's do that, I guess. See if we can make that happen. So what I'm looking at here is, and maybe I'll, maybe what I'll do is I'll start on this side. Okay, I might... You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I my when I was first thinking I was gonna come up around here and leaf all this all the way around. Um, now that I'm looking at it, I might just um, go ahead and let it dip up under there. I think that'll look good and it'll leave more area in the middle. So let's do that. Once again, I'm gonna stick it right there. I'm kind of hovering it on the top. And then kind of get my distance there. Kind of like what you would do a chalk line or something like that. You know, you pick it up right here and go. All you got to do is just whoop. It's like that. It's nice and straight. Let's do the same thing on the top side. Mm, let's try that again. All right. And then what I was thinking here was... I'm like, let's see if this looks all right. Yeah, I like it. I think, let's see. Yeah, I like that. So we have our, besides trimming up right here, we have the area laid out where we're going to be doing our copper leaf. This is going to look awesome. Um, the layout's a little bit different than what I imagined. Like I said, I was going to come around there. Um, also, now that we're dipping into this area right here, I might just bring the filigree uh, maybe out this way. And then um, this will be like a, most likely I'm going to do a lace right there. Because the, just to show you something, this is a wooden paddle. Literally, I put some 600 grit onto it. I cleaned it up. Um, I didn't even primer it. I just went straight to base coat because it is just a paddle. You know, it's going to be hung up on a wall. Um, I knew my base coat would adhere to that wood pretty good. Really good, actually. Um so instead of primering it and doing all the work like that, I went ahead and went with the black base coat and flaked it and cleared it. So there is a little bit, you see right there, it's just a little bit of a, a texture into it that kind of happened because of the wood. Um, it was a little rough, I guess, right there. So uh, that I knew that was going to be lace. So I was like, oh, that's no big deal. So one of those things where if you were to leave this panel all the way open and a customer, this was all to be painted, there would be a little highlight of like, what is like, what's going on there? Like could have a problem. Like maybe some customers wouldn't be able to see that, but I don't know. Let me know if you can see it, but it's a little bit of a, it's the best way I can say it. It's like modeling um, where it kind of soaked into the wood right there. These are just wooden paddles. You can see that there's the black base coat 
that I sprayed right onto the, the paddle. It's going to be hung up on the wall. You could, I, I could have done both sides, but I'm doing uh, five of these actually for him because I have painted five bikes uh, for him. So I knew this wasn't going to be great. Only this one really did it. Uh, I knew this one would be great for this particular paddle because we're going to be doing some lace and that will cover right up into that and you will never be able to see that. So just a little trick. If you do encounter a problem and you're doing one of these paint jobs and you have some kind of problem like this, just put lace there. Cause that's gonna, if you were to put sun rays here, once again, you're gonna have that, like what's going on. But if you put lace, shoot, nobody gonna know. But anyways, I guess that's just a lecture on how to work around um, some of your problems. And I think I've maybe explained that before, but all right, let's get to it. We are, let's, let's put a little bit of 16th inch right here. Cause we're not gonna put any 16th inch in where we're gonna be laying out the leaf because we want that just to be solid um we wouldn't not want to mess with another paint line in there because you know we already have to deal with these two edges right here it's, in my opinion just leave it clean but let's grab that uh 16th inch it's half the size of what the eighth inch is if y'all don't know Where's the edge? Let's see. Okay. All right. What we'll do is we'll just dip this out of there as well. All right. See what I did there? Instead of making a point there. I just went ahead and rounded that. I feel like that looks good. I like it better that way, actually. Um, with the, the round and the point right there. Do the same thing on this side. We'll let this thing fly in here. Hmm, see the problem out there? If we didn't want that to happen, uh, well, this could be flaked again, and you that would go away. If you're if you're ever in a case, a scenario like that where you can't get away with doing something like lace to hide it, uh, just reflake it scuff it down hit it with more metal flake that'll cover it up and then clear it again all right i think that's all that's all we're going to do there so we're going to do the copper leaf right here it's going to fill in that area uh we're going to do the lace right there we got a trim looks like we got to trim our 16th inch right there yep so here's the layout we got it done that's pretty easy Okay, and we talked about putting some um, type of a filigree. And before I was thinking maybe both sides, now I'm thinking um, just coming out of like this, this one side right here. Let's see what I have. Okay. What I'll do is I'll
so I know we want to get rid of the outside of this. Let's go ahead and do that. God, if I can get a hold of it. Whew, I almost had a panic attack there. All right. Then I'll pull out the outer perimeter. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we have a better idea what that's going to look like. There we go. So what I'm going to do is, yep, that's what I'm going to do. Just like that. I'm going to have a little bit of over overlap. Probably right there. Yeah, let's pull out the inside too because the inside also, let me think here. Um, uh, oh no, that's right. Okay. Okay, let's, oh yeah, just like that. So we'll have the leafing come around here and then it'll kind of just spin around there. Let's make sure that's really what we want to do. Yep, I think I like it like that. Okay, let's lay it out. Take some masking tape. This is just an inch and a half, I think. You can use transfer paper or frisket film as well, but I always have masking tape on hand and that works for me. I think I want to go right there. Let's see. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, I think I need to, I know I need to 
trim these up right here. Let's go ahead and hit these lines with the exacto. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit. See if we can sneak that line out of there. All right, see how I trimmed that? Well, it's gonna look good. Okay, so that'll also be copper leaf and we'll have to do a little masking around that. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, unless I can pull it out of one of these other, might be able to do that actually. We'll worry about that when the time comes, but we do need to spray this. We're gonna go ahead and hit this thing with a black base coat with the airbrush. I did, so some of you guys know I went to the and had a set up the Autorama uh, Salt Lake City just last weekend and I took my airbrush and it did not weather the storm in the van coming home. So I went and bought at Hobby Lobby the Iwata Neo. $65. So, yeah, I go through these about every three months or so. Um, I did, I was going to buy an Eclipse, but then I thought, geez, that was like uh, 80 bucks more. And I was like, nah, this is going to work just fine for what we're going to be doing. So, like you could spring for a Micron and stuff like that, but if you're doing this kind of work, it's not worth it. I feel like it's better to buy something like this. Still really durable. Sprays good every time. Uh, this will spray good right out of the box. No problem for sure. Never had an Iwata that, that didn't spray right. Or All the machining's good on it. Like the cap fits good. Yeah. Comes with a tool. I always pull that crown off. Uh, it's just hard to see without that thing. Most people do it. Just, just take that thing off. So I have a, I know I'm sure people are asking questions here. Uh, have I ever used a snap on airbrush? Um, I have not, but I have heard somebody that's used one, but I can't remember what they said. So <laughs> I'm guessing it's, um, unless another company's making it, I'm guessing it's not that great. An airbrush is one of those things that uh, I don't know. It just, it takes like a company like Iwata to figure out all the details and everything. And I don't know, they got a good thing going. And if you can get an airbrush for, I don't know, what's the snap on brush. It's probably pretty expensive. I mean, for $75, can't beat it. Or what, what was it? 70, $65, $65. Okay. Looks like it's going to spray just great like normal we'll put that up for a second all right i'm going to take some regular look at that messy can i'm going to take some black base coat and mix it with some urethane reducer which i have right here so check that out we'll get the airbrush loaded up
All right, I'll do a quick last in real quick on uh, thinning your airbrush paint out. Okay, so we have a white sheet of paper here. Looks like, that looks like the airbrush is spraying good. Okay, one thing I noticed by spraying this, I don't know um, if you guys can notice, but you can see it's a little bit, see how the, the dots, it's like splotchy. I noticed when I was pouring this into the airbrush and I kind of did it on purpose that it was a little thicker than uh, how I normally like it. And the reason being is if your airbrush, air, airbrush pressure of two things, if your airbrush pressure is too low, it can cause this kind of problem, which doesn't cause, which causes uh, blends to be not that great looking. We'll, we'll thin this out and you, we'll be able to see what, what a good blend will look like but trying to blend something that a paint that's not reduced enough not thinned enough you can see that the blend it has when it blends into the white paper it's just there's just like big specks it's not smooth um same thing as you can see right here the paint was a little thick because when i was doing these dagger strokes um you can see how it kind of hesitated right there. Um, you know, really splotchy. Let's go ahead and thin this out a little bit. All right, let's check it out now. Okay, so this is, so I put a lot of thinner in there. Let's do these same dagger strokes. Okay, that's looking good. The blends are looking way better. You can see how nice and smooth those are. Um, but what it's doing now is I did thin it out a little bit more than I usually do kind of on purpose to be able to show you once again that if your paint is too thin, it's going to, to and it's not too bad on paper. Um, if we were to do it on uh, something that wasn't as porous as paper, like metal or this paint finish, it's going to do th that number. It's going to be too runny and too thin and it blows out on you. Um, if you if you go slow and you build it up just like that i mean that's perfect it's perfect as well but i'm gonna go ahead and thicken thick the thicken this uh mixture up just a little bit more so what i'll do pull the cap off put a little more black base mix it up that's way better i mean you can see how nice and smooth those blends are so if we do this right here like look how nice and soft that is this is what we're looking for if you're doing uh if you're doing this if you're spraying that on top of your lines like we're going to do right here it's not going to look as good look how soft that is so imagine the tape lines running right in between there and those are blending off of both sides like this rather than not like that. Okay. So let's do it. So I'm just aiming right for the middle of those lines. Building up the paint, not trying to get it all in one one swoop you know we're kind of building it up a little bit
we're going to be laying leafing down in here. So really, I'm only worried about blending that way. See how nice, oh, see how nice and smooth that is, that blend? That's what we're looking for. Right, so once again, I'm not worried about all these lines in here because those are going to be uh, copper leafed. I just have to mask some of that out. All right, so I got the inside done here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the outer edge. Oh yeah, so far so good. Okay, looks like we got that edge down. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Huh, looks good. Once again, not worried about that or inside there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean out the airbrush. I have a mixture of, which one is this? I have a couple of mixtures here. All right, so I have a dark root beer brown candy. That's what we're gonna be using. Um, so how this is mixed is I use um, a little bit of red, yellow, and blue at different concentrates to be able to make this brown. 
Um, and I'll go into more depth about that um, either in the next video or something like that, but um, the percentages and stuff like that. And then I reduced it down to make it sprayable. So we'll go ahead and load the airbrush up. We'll get our white piece of paper out and see how this stuff is blending out. All right, let's check it out. That's looking pretty good. That's definitely spraying good. Let's do a little bit of a blend there. Okay, yeah, that's blending nice. So once again, uh, we went over the details with that. It would be really splotchy if it was too thick or if you had your air pressure down too low the two main problems of that would cause you know the problem of the blotchiness like we looked at before but we're looking good here so let's go with it what i'm going to do is i'm going to go around all of the uh just all the edges again i'm not going to worry about the inside of here once again the leafing will be going on top of that part we will come back with this brown candy and we will tint that candy just a little bit with the same color. I'm pretty much gonna hit all the edges here and let the edges kind of blend into that brown. Once again, we're using a candy color. So the color that we're using here is a transparent color candies are transparent you can see you can still see the sparkle underneath that um so yeah makes sense right the black covered it up the uh, candy color is a transparent dye and um, you're able to see the metal flake through it so basically we're just tinting the silver flake to a brown color right now kind of brown gold color that i mixed All right, looking good. Let's see how much paint we have in our airbrush. Not very much. Fill it back up. Pop it off. The reason why I'm looking and topping it off because we're getting ready to do some lace and we wanna make sure that the airbrush is loaded up so that way when we lay it out, we won't have to like, oh crap, we're out of paint halfway through. All right, I'm going to grab a piece of this lace I have laying around, try to find a good area. So uh, I've had people hit me up before about using an adhesive spray with this stuff. I, you know, I've, I wouldn't do it because I've had people ask me, like, how do you get the adhesive spray off of the board once you put peel the lace? And I'm like, uh, don't ever do that because <laughs> you don't want to have to deal with any kind of adhesive or anything like that happening. So I really like this. I like that part of the, the rose there. Let's go ahead and put this around though. Let's go ahead and wrap that underneath the board. So if you don't have like 100% contact, it's going to be fine. Like as long as you're not letting it move a whole lot. And as long as you're spraying straight down on it. If you're spraying it at an angle like this, you're just blowing it all up under there. And it's... Um, It'll probably be fine. It's just going to be a lot more subtle. So, okay. Airbrush is loaded up. I still like to start at the edges and just going at it and just like going all crazy in the middle. 
start with your edges and kind of blend it in again. Okay, I think that's plenty dark. Let me just go ahead and take a peek. I need it just a little bit harder. What I think I did there is I accidentally grabbed my brown-orange mixture by accident. I was wondering why it wasn't so dark. But I still have the lace laid out. We're still okay. Um, and we're just using a little bit darker color. So I did put a little bit more of that brown back in here to darken this up. There we go. That's where we're wanting it, right there. Let's check that out. Usually doesn't take that long. Like I said, I loaded up the wrong gold color. You can see how that's a lot lighter. Uh, but I hit it with the darker color, and we're good. What I'll go ahead and do is pour this out, go back to that lighter brown gold color, and then I'm just going to blend that in. Okay, I'm just going to kind of brush this over the whole surface. See, I'm just kind of tinting what we got going on there. Just a little bit, kind of blending it in. There we go. Okay, that's going to do it. Just a little bit. All right, so far so good. Let's go ahead and lay out some masking here and we'll get ready to uh, do the leafing.
Okay. Got the outside taped up. Let's go ahead and tape up this inside as well. Okay, so I think uh, what I'm going to do here is instead of trying to mask and cut all that out, I have another one of these right here. So I might just try to, okay, I think I need this one right here. See, I might try to just use one of these. There we go. That was easier. Uh, let's see if I got this one too. I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit easier there. Who knows? I could be doing it the hard way. Yeah, I did something. That made it a little easier. I'll go ahead and tape off the rest. Looks like I just got a little bit in here. I'll go ahead and see if we can bridge that up right there. this one actually this is kind of the tedious part you know but it has to be done and sometimes you can find little tricks here and there to help you out kind of like what I did with that but we're just trying to get this all masked up so we don't get any of the sizing glue 
um, on anything else that we don't intend on leafing. Let's go ahead and Okay, I think we got it. Let's double check here. It looks like we got a little spot here. Just that little spot right there. I think we got it. Look like we got it all. Let's see. Um, yeah, that's good. All right. And while I was there at the uh, Hobby Lobby, I ended up buying a, another because they're so cheap $65. Uh, I bought another one just to spray my sizing glue out of um i was always been wrestling with the switching back and forth um now i'm just going to clean this one out and use this, this one just straight for nothing but sizing glue and leafing same airbrush maybe on this one i'll leave the i'll leave the tip on because i really don't need that to i don't need to be able to see like that's really for detail um yeah no biggie Right, we've got the lime line sizing glue. This is a water-based adhesive glue. Um, the instructions are on the back. I used this on display just last week. Let's we take that off. Uh, pretty much tells you how to use this stuff. Um, one thing I can, I do say for sure, and most people make this mistake, is by applying it too thick. Um, or you need to reduce this with water. So this goes 50-50 with with water mix it up spray it on um, if you're spraying this out of a sp spray gun you could use it straight out of the bottle let's grab a cup here got the glue Let me grab some water. All right, 50 50 with water. Oh, what the hell? Bug got in it. Man, there was something in that water. I'm going to get rid of this. There was something floating around in that water I poured in that. Or something. Maybe it was the cup. But you can see how thick that is. 
so you do need to thin it out. And it's water-based, so you thin it out with water. Uh, I know this is clean water. Here we go. No floaties. Nice and clean. All right. Make sure this is spraying okay. Oh, yeah. Brand nice, like it's brand new. Okay, a couple of things to consider. Um, when you're spraying the glue, it's better to spray like straight towards wherever you're spraying. Like if I'm spraying this way, you're going to be hitting more like this way and you're actually going to be missing that edge right there. Um, if you do spray that direction, it's because you're trying to make sure you get glue into the edges. But remember, if you're going to spray the whole thing at this angle, and then spray all of this at that same angle, you're gonna be missing this whole edge right here of glue. It's just gonna be barely missing that edge because um, the tape's a little thick, you know? So, I mean, that's fine to be that angle. Just make sure you're coming back at this angle. All right, we're gonna make sure that everything's clean. Oh, something flew off right there. Gonna kind of blow it off and I'll hit it with my finger and make sure that I don't feel anything weird. Okay. Feels clean. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly put down my first. Oh, I just dripped right there. I'm glad that happened right at first. Maybe my cap wasn't all the way down. Okay, let's try that again. Laying down what I call and what most people call a tack coat. So it's just really light. Once again, we don't want the sizing glue to be laid out so thick at once where it wants to beat up like this. I hope you guys can see that. You can see how it's all beaten up right there. It's exactly what we do not want. If it's applied like that, you need to wipe it off. It's just going to create that same texture when it dries. So as you can see it, where I've hit it, it doesn't do that because I'm just spraying it light. Not going all heavy. We want to keep this stuff really thin, but we do want to make sure it lays out even. Even, you want to make sure you have enough glue. You need to make sure that that, that leaf is tacked down good enough so you don't have any problems. Okay, so that's kind of like one and a half coats I did there. I'm going to let it tack up just for a second. All right, let's go ahead and check this. And we're not going to check it there, obviously, because it's already starting to get tacky. We're good. We're going to keep going. You see, that was probably only about, what, 20 seconds or so? If you're spraying this stuff on light, you really don't have to wait too long. That has a good surface now that to where it's pretty much even all the way across and everything has kind of like a one coat on it. I'm going to go ahead and get my copper leaf ready. Because one thing you don't want to do is um, wait too long. You know, you have probably about 10 minutes or so. It all kind of depends on 
the conditions. Um, if you were doing a big, like a car, you wouldn't do the whole car. You would do one section at a time. So we're going to get the leaf ready. And we are using the copper leaf. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set that right there. And we will get ready for our last coat here. Okay, we're ready to go. So this last coat, I want to make sure it's going on super even. and check it okay what we're looking for is to make sure it doesn't string up and it's stringing up just barely but uh and get ready because really it's a matter of of minutes if not seconds i think we're good right here so i'm gonna go ahead and, and we'll grab our leafing Gonna kind of pat it down. Grabbed a few sheets on that one. I'll just go ahead. Little bit of a problem right there. Oh, I was missing a little bit of leaf right there. Oh, we're okay. To get you guys in just for a little bit closer look get a little better angle at it maybe here we go
All right, I think we got it. Let's check it out. All right, let's pull out our leaf roller. And what we'll do is we'll kind of just go around everything, give it a roll. What we're doing is we're just making sure that we have good contact between the leaf and the glue. Because that's it's obviously super important because we're going to be laying, layering clear coat over this. We don't want anything to happen. Okay. Go ahead and grab our burnishing brush. As you can see right here, I'm kind of just poking at it rather than swooping because where these edges are right here, I really want them to to make sure that we got it down the enough down into the glue that I'm not gonna wipe it away and we'll have some missing leaf leaf there. So let's go ahead and we'll just kind of poke at it first and then we'll, we'll kind of go back and forth. I'm really focusing on my edges as well. Like you see right here, you can see, you can actually, if you look really close, you can see that your edges, when they don't quite, right there, well, they don't quite get tucked in. Those are the edges you wanna make sure you pay attention to because when you go to pull that tape, what it's gonna do is just gonna make that edge all jagged. But if we get in there and we poke at it and brush at it at an angle like this, that the bristles are kind of pushing that down into the corner and that's exactly what we're wanting to do. Another thing is we're kind of making everything look uniform by brushing it. It's kind of making it look like it's more all solid one piece rather than, you know, uh, separate pieces. And the longer you spin on this and the, and the more you brush it and the, more, the double checking your edges, the better it's gonna look. See right here, we're missing a little bit. Let's go ahead and let's grab just a spare piece we have right there and we'll go ahead and push into those couple areas. Looks like we were missing some leaf. We'll get it pounded in there. So the nice thing is with this uh, leafing system is you're, and the glue, you're able to leaf it twice if you want. Like after we're done patting this down and getting it all burnished out, um, 
and if you notice there was like maybe a couple of spots that you wanted to fix um also when you when it goes to engine turning and putting the swirls in it doing the double leafing will prevent you or will help prevent burning through if you're pushing too hard so there's some forgiveness there if you add a base layer so this could be the base layer that we layered here we could uh, glue just do the same process again lay the glue out on top of this and layer it with the leaf do the same thing burnish it roll it and then uh you would you would pull the tape and then spin it uh, this one looks like we're good enough on just just doing it the first time the first one round uh, once again this isn't on a motorcycle it's just just like an art piece for one of my customers that has his bike painted like this so i think we're just going to one leaf this thing because i think it's going to turn out just fine Like there's a spot on right there too. Let's see. And as you see, like if you see spots where it's torn, fix it. Is that good there? I think that's torn a little bit right there. You can see, like right here. Got a little bit of an edge. Gonna pound some leaf in that area, brush it out, boom, fixed it. All right, let's get into this filigree area. I'm good right there. Looks like a little chunk missing right there. Little chunk right there looks like we're missing. Hopefully there's enough adhesive there, let's see. Okay, yeah. Keep at it. This does take a little bit to get those edges to flatten out. All right, we just about got it here, I think. All right, I think we got it. Those edges look pretty good. 
double check a little bit right here maybe but uh all in all i think we're we're looking good here all right so what i'll go ahead and do is um okay so usually what i do let's go ahead and raise that camera up just a little bit all right so usually what i do is i'll pull all the tape at this point um, and all the masking and then i would spin it um and that's but um considering that i want to show you guys how to tint the the leafing with that same root beer brown candy color um i'm gonna go ahead and leave the masking on which uh either way it still works so let's grab a tool All right, looks like I'm about to grab my old one. We do have an updated version of these. Um, however, I cannot see. Oh, there it is right there. All right, these suckers are on Amazon. It's just a, it's just a basically a spinner with a, a machined piece of aluminum. It has this nice foam pad right here. It has some give to it and then a 5,000 grit sandpaper. So you could, if you, if you wanted to get away without using the tool, you could just get a piece of sandpaper like this and use your thumb and spin it. Um, however, I find that using this tool, you can get them really uniform and you can make them look a lot better. But So not necessary. You know, 5,000 grit in your thumb would probably work just, just as good. All right, so let's check this out. So... Go ahead and lay it for the first one right there. We're going to spin it. Let's see if we can get a good angle on this. What I'm doing is I'm overlapping about 40% uh, kind of leaving the center. So I'll stick it right there, give it about a half a turn. And as you can see, it just sands in a swirl, an engine turn is what they call it. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Let's keep it going down this side.
All right. I'm even going to spin the filigree that we did as well. Throw some spins in that. Okay, we're looking good. Let's go ahead and so like I said, usually I would have pulled the the masking before I did that. Reason being is sometimes you can pick pick up little particles on your sandpaper and when you go to spin, you could drag it across um, cutting into your your leafing. Uh, the other thing is, is I feel like it does wear down the pad a little bit more because your pad is now um, turning up against those layers of tape and uh, this does come with two, an extra pad, so it'll last you a long time. It'll just last you a lot longer if you take care of it by pulling your tape first. But, uh, okay, so since we did leave that for the purpose of laying out some candy, we'll go ahead and do that now. Switch out my airbrush. All right, let's see what this, I have a kind of a brown gold on here. Let's kind of blow some of that leaf, make sure it's not gonna get in our candy. All right, so I'm just gonna aim for the edges, blending into the center. Go ahead and put a little bit more brown. I throw a little bit more brown into that mixture, make it a little darker. There we go. What I'm doing is I'm just I'm aiming for the edge and letting the overspray. Blend into that that leafing there. Right. So once again, I just kind of feathered that edge in, aiming for the tape line and letting the, uh, the overspray do the work there. So on this, I'm just going to kind of shadow just the areas. I'm not going to fill it all the way in, just going to shadow the areas that would naturally be shadowed. Throw a little bit up in there. Looks good. Let's go ahead and pull the tape.
Got the outside pulled off. Let's go ahead and unmask the inside here. You can see how nice and sharp that edge is. It's because we worked it down and made sure it was all the way stuck instead of just pulling the tape. Yeah, super sharp line though. It looks really good. As you can see, when I'm pulling this tape, I'm making sure that I'm pulling away from the edge and I'm not pulling this way or any kind of weird way. I want to make sure that I'm pulling like, what is that? Like at a 45 and yeah, pull up, pull that direction though. Don't pull towards your paint. It could cause a bad edge. You could uh, kind of bring up that leafing too. If you don't have enough glue, but so far so good here. We've got really crisp lines. And we did just do the one layer of leafing.
Whew, okay, there it is. All right, that wasn't too bad. <clears throat> All right, so uh, next step after this, I would um, put some, uh, maybe some glass cleaner just a little bit. Just kind of get a little bit of the, a uh, little bit of residue and stuff. Tack rag. And then it's ready for, uh, put three or four coats of clear coat on this 2K clear coat. And it's good to go for what it is. If this was, um, say it's like a motorcycle part, you would want to clear coat this piece with three to four coats, sand it down and with 600, 800 grit, 1200 grit, whatever you want, and then re-clear it again and give it a, that flow coat. Um, I might still do it with this. We'll, we'll check it out and see what it looks like after that first go around to clear coat, but it might make it through and, and look good enough for what it is. But, uh, okay. I think that's it. We had a lot of questions. I didn't get to any of them. So, um, but yeah, Larry, J Michael Jarvis, I appreciate you guys all being here. Uh, appreciate all the questions. I'll, um, I'll be able to look through them and hit you up in the in the comments so kind of go through those later but like i said thanks for being here i'll see you next thursday <laughs>